This is AEW Unrestricted. I'm Aubrey Edwards here with my lovely co-host, Tony Schiavone. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up? How are you? Good. It, I'm really excited about this one. Dude, I'm really excited because this table's so full. Like yes. My knee's rubbing up against yours. I know. That's why I was excited. Drink. Yeah, this is great. What's in that well, bag, day, man? The day's not over, babe. <laughs> Who do we got here? Who do we got here with us? Tony? We have Jurassic Express. Hell we, we, yeah! We have Jungle Boy, Mark Stone, and Luchasaurus. <laughs> and Luchasaurus. And Luch- uh, Luchasaurus and, and his gang. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> He's okay. like the reason for the Jurassic part. You know? Right. Yeah. Why is that? Because I'm a dinosaur. Yes. Yeah. Right. Duh. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Fair enough. I just want to point out Luchasaurus is sitting on the end yeah. because his legs are too long, yes. which he does on literally every cross country flight. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, exit row, aisle guy, first you class. Get you yeah. got to get the miles, man. You're flying LA to Jacksonville yeah. all the time. You got to get that Shakespeare uh, uh, yeah. seat. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Shakespeare seat is seat Wait, two. why is it the Shakespeare seat? Jake Snake told me that. He, he, he told me this. So Jake 2B? Said that 2B is the Shakespeare seat for us tall guys because you don't want to be A, 1A. No, because then you can't put your bag on the ground. Yeah, and it's also a box for us. Like, it's this. It's nothing. You can't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I that makes sense. feet oh, under the seat. So you're the aisle yeah. seat, first class. 2B. 2B. First off the plane, behind the first row. It's the closest you can be to get the off the plane quick. That's pretty dope. Yeah, so that's 2B. That's my goal always to get the Shakespeare Did seat. Do they do first class snacks? During the pandemic? They do. Yeah, it's like, like a box. Like full though. service? No, it's a box. It's a box. I don't get it. Because I know, like, I get the Biscoff cookies because I'm still in, like, main oh, comfort I plus. I love Biscoff cookies. Yeah, that's a... Uh, oh, I'll take them. I haven't... Well, I like them. I just... I had those have you had the cookie butter? I like yeah. those. The Biscoff cookie butter? Yes. It's fucking legit. Yes. That, yeah, that's cool. We should probably do a podcast. Any other food before we get started? <laughs> no. Okay. Should. How's that bang, Tony? <laughs> Bang, baby. So I uh, le- want to talk about uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy being a team. Uh, started teaming at Bar Wrestling as Land of the Lost. Became a boy his dinosaur a few months later. How did you two initially become a tag team? It was yeah. someone else's idea. Who's uh-huh. idea? Can you say? No, it's a thing we'll... Oh, yeah, no. It's okay. okay. It was someone else's idea. Someone else's <laughs> We idea. wanted to work together, though, because yeah. we had known each other for a long time. Right. Um, and I wanted him to come to bar wrestling. I wanted to actually wrestle him. All right. I thought it'd be cool. Um, they kicked me all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was someone else's idea. And uh, I thought, like, I thought theoretically it would be kind of cool. Um, but I, I was like, whatever. Um, and then we saw on Twitter, we were doing this, like, tag tournament or trios tournament or something. And someone tweeted, can we have Jungle Boy come out to the ring on Luchasaurus's shoulders? Hmm. And I was like, yeah, I guess that sounds easy enough. Yeah. And we did it, and for some reason, everybody just, like, lost their shit. Like, that was, like, the loudest pop of the entire show. And I was like... Yeah. Entrance is everything, man. Well, the funny thing is, the next time we had to go through the door, so I was like, how are we going to do this? Uh, yeah. so we decided <laughs> just to <laughs> fall back, <laughs> right. and it just because beca- we, we were panicking. we got to get out there. And then it just became the thing we do, and everyone thought that's, like, hysterical. It's like, but it's, like, the way we ride Your abs places. must be crazy, man. He's got good abs. I don't know about that. Yeah, but. he's, like, 22, so he's probably uh, got real great abs. Um, he's him. But yes, eat whatever he fucking wants. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know. Not Biscoff cookies, apparently. Well, you told me I've, I've gotten heavy in the past year. Oh, my mm. neck is starting wow. to really hurt. Okay. Yeah. So, so you guys are, are teaming up bar wrestling. Yeah. When did you guys get the call for AEW? Well, I guess he, you got it before me. You were already there. Yeah, I think I had already had the call yeah. before that. Um, and originally. I remember the first time I actually met the Bucks. Um, I'd met Cody before, but the Bucks and Cody came to bar wrestling um, because they were kind of going around doing like a little indie tour. Right. What the hell are you doing? And I took this picture with them that was like my announcement picture. Mm -hmm. And um, originally... You were on the shoulders, right? Yeah, on Cody's Cody's shoulders. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Mm. I know the product. Um, But originally they were telling me that day me and Marco were supposed to be a team. That was, like, the original yeah. plan before he was in the mix. Um, and then he ended up – Double or Nothing was your first – Yeah, because I, I talked to Trent, who – and he just – I was texting him saying, hey, you know, Ring wanted to decide not to pick me up. They just – they were going to use me when I come out to the West Coast and stuff, but they didn't have any ideas for me creatively. And Trent's like, hey, I'm in the car with the Bucks right now. You want me to tell them that you're not with them? Because they thought you were signed with ROH. Oh, shit. I was like, yeah, tell them. He's, they're like, oh, let's bring them to Double or Nothing. Does he want to be in the thing? I'm like, Yeah. And then they came to Bar Wrestling and wanted me and Jungle Boy to do a promo for the thing. And they're like, hey, I was like, hey, can we do it together? And like, they're like, yeah, do whatever you want. So we just started doing our little shtick together. And it started to get real over on BTE. And we kept coming up with more ideas. So by the time we actually even came out together at all, 
people knew us from, we never even really kind of had a tag. Like they, they knew us from BTE. Right. They didn't know what we could do. They just BTE knew. BTE is magical like it, that. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. So that really was kind of like, it was just our kind of funny idea together. Cause I think we had two characters that were kind of on their own. It's like, okay, what, we, why is he a jungle boy? Why is he a dinosaur? But together it kind of just worked. And right. Now it makes sense. Now there's context. So it was originally supposed to be Marco and Jungle Boy. Yeah. But then Marco came into the mix later. Yeah. How did how did that all go down, Marco? Three. So at two. two. Okay. <laughs> at what, at okay. Woke up. Okay. <laughs> okay. What it's time that uh, two? Yeah, that's about when okay. I took a nap after we did signing. Okay. Very oh, good. Gotcha, good gotcha. job. Good job. Yeah. Proud of you. Thank you. So go ahead. No, I had a broken leg at the time. That that's right. So. uh they didn't. They didn't. Uh, they didn't bring me in immediately because I wasn't able to. But I, I was. Uh, I came in for double or nothing. Or yeah, yeah, you were there. yeah double or nothing. That I was your first double. show back, right? Because mm-hmm. I think you told me you weren't ready in the back. Or it was, <laughs> but you weren't gonna miss it. I had one against Joey. I had one match against Joey, but I wasn't. I shouldn't I came have done back that. And broke his nose first day. I did. Wow. You yeah. did? Yeah. What? what? Yeah, I tried to do a dragon run off the top on the apron. Oh, crazy. Well. Cool. Yeah, like I mean, you're saying it, that, it, like it, you it, wouldn't do that. It went, That's the wildest thing ever. I would do that. I mean, the, the move went fine, but when I landed, Joey rolled off the apron and landed on my head, and it Hell just yeah. smashed me. Oh shit! Ooh. This is a fun time. Marco goes hard. Yes, hard he does. in the paint, Marco. Yeah. So, Marco, uh, oh, yeah. it's been revealed that uh, you were ranked number 182 on the PWI Top 500. Yeah. In 2020. Yeah. How about that, huh? <laughs> yeah. I've never How does that make you feel? Good. I've never been ranked before. That was really cool. That's tremendous. Yeah. That's really cool. Because you fly through the air like no one else. Well, thank you. I mean, That's because other people throw it. Yeah. No, well, I was getting ready to say. You don't really have a choice. <laughs> the best yeah, Canadian gonna... destroyer I've ever seen because you literally throw one yeah. person into somebody else. Yeah. That's <laughs> let, let me interject something here. You have faced really big guys. Yes. And obviously you've, you've suffered your injuries. Yes. You you obviously am I right to say that you'll do just about anything? <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, yeah, judge, baby. right. Yeah, hey, I don't really I, I don't I don't really have any fears. Um, I was brought up not really realizing that my size was a negative factor. Yeah, and like so I don't look at it as, look at it as a negative factor. Right. I try to I try to use that as a positive and as a something that pushes me to you know push myself. It's one of those things, like, I remember you had the match with, it was Brody or Lance in Atlanta. They both happened, like, the day. Like, yeah, the they, they both happened, the, the whole day is a blur. But, like, I remember you being booked against those guys. It was like, oh, this is why we have Marco. For these <laughs> moments like this to really put over how big and strong these guys are. I remember one of the moments we were like, oh, yeah, just, like, throw Marco out of the ring over me into the gun club. <laughs> It's like this, like, it's funny that people are saying like, oh, Marco's too small. Marco can't do this. But it's like you serve a fantastic role. Like everyone's unique for their own reason. And yeah, I, but I, it, there's more than that. I mean, it's absolutely it, it, the fact I mean, that's is, just scratching the surface. That's right? Right. It's It's showing that you have determination, heart or not afraid of anyone. Mm-hmm. And you always, you know, you, you always fight. And, and I think that. That serves you you well as well. Um, yeah. So, have we asked you yet? How did the name Jurassic Express start? It's Tony's idea. Yeah, it was, it was Tony. Tony. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We were boy and his dinosaur kind of on our own, and then we were trying to figure out how to bring Marco into it. And Tony's like, Jurassic Express. That's it. I love it. <laughs> you guys, you guys didn't like it initially, right? I didn't think I didn't kind of li- I didn't like it at all. I, I was, thought it was no, a little I, goofy. I thought, I thought it was, it was too was... goofy, but then it really quickly kind of grew on us, and I'm like, actually, it's cool. So you know. Yeah. It's proven it, that it you works put express now. in the name. It's it's gonna yeah, lead to success. Right. You know, it's uh, funny. So I got I actually got offered my contract. What, what, yeah. What what was the time that I actually came out with you guys for the first time? It was, was fight for the fallen. Yeah. Was it fight for yeah. the fallen? Yeah, July. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I got offered the contract there. Um. Yeah. After at the after party is when I was told what we were going to be called. No, no, no. It was a little before, and then Joey found out that we were going to be called the Jurassic Express. And he said, what? That's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very Joey and, Janela. And, and Tony's standing right there, and Tony goes, well, I, I came up with that, though. And he goes, well, it's fucking stupid. I remember that. <laughs> and, and Tony goes, well, I appreciate your honesty. But uh, that was really funny. But... um that's an accurate conversation. Like, it's not even yeah, like a... Yeah, yeah. A, <laughs> I can totally see all that happening. That was the extent of it. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was it. whole conversation. 
I love this question, so I'm going to ask it. Oh, sure. What's the locker room like for you guys? Ooh. What's your locker room personality? Oh, shit. I love it. Mm. We, have a, we have a great lot. Well, the locker rooms are all separated right now because of how we're situated. And there's yeah. only wow. so many guys in our locker room. There's like right. faces and heels. It, yeah, kind of. Yeah. And there, there's like... In our locker room, there's like 10, what, 10 guys, mm -hmm. probably? Yeah. Like 10, that. 12. Yeah, it's like us, uh, the best friends in Orange. Um, Janella. Janella, Miro. Kip's in there now, too. So I guess there's a couple. Because Kip poured candy on you. Yes. Slow <laughs> motion, sensual. Yeah. This fucking guy. <laughs> but we keep them separated, <laughs> well, you know? No one there. there. Orange is security. There with the little thing of candy, and he's like, I really want to pour this on you. And I was like, all right. And then he, That's consent, man. He had it, and he didn't post it for Halloween. I was like, dude, what are you doing? So he just sent it to Come me. On, Kip. I posted it days late, but it is what it is. But yeah, the locker room's real cool. Yeah. Um yeah, we have fun in there. I kinda look forward to just coming and being in the locker room. Yeah, yeah. me too. It's like oh, a yeah. separate thing now from just the wrestling. There's the show, but I mean yeah. we're there all day. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. fun hanging out with They're everybody. Long days. Um Yeah. We keep it cool. tight. We keep yeah. a tight yeah. ship in there. You gotta We got little locker room games and Yeah. And oh yeah. Oh like what? Mm -hmm. Well in the tail on you know, Jurassic Express. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like Whose yeah. tail? Well, after we play Spin it's the Bottle. Oh, yeah. uh, gotcha. Yeah. No. Spin, Spin the, the Bottle gets a little crazy sometimes. He turns the lights off in the locker Yeah, he turns room. the lights off for all these games. And then fucking Trent and Joey Janela don't like it, so they get mad all the time. But I think it's, like, relaxing to just be in there with the TV and the lights off. I don't but, see the I don't see the harm in turning the lights off. No, I mean, you're fucking goofballs. But, so we have, like, a, a constant. <laughs> we don't have to stare at each other naked all the time. Yeah, so. that's true. Well, Marco will just get naked. We do have a rule that one hour a day in the locker room, no one's allowed to wear any clothes. No? Yeah. One hour? One hour. Yes. Is it like a cumulative one hour or one hour? I mean, sometimes no, we said that we start the one hour and then like everyone has to get naked. And yeah, and sometimes then we like play our games. <laughs> call times two. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. We Try to call time. We get, we get there a little early. That's why we're there early. That's like community shower time as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's for some people. It's Not just, everybody does that. It's team building yeah. is what we're doing. Yeah. Boy, this this is taking a left turn somewhere. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where. I don't even know where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. One way to put it. I have no idea. Well, it looks like you have fun in the locker room. And you know what, guys? We all have fun and we don't necessarily stay in the locker room I and mean, when we go out we walk around we you know with a mask on and we have we talk to people and you're always looking for talent come in our room and see that there's no talent <laughs> so close the door real quick yeah i open the door i say oh i'm sorry i was looking for talent and yeah. i close the door That's because it said, i just thought it was That's funny because it says talent on the door and i'm yeah. thinking oh. we removed that sign because of this <laughs> yeah. sure you did. but uh, obviously we have a, we have a, a great time and and, and being together and uh, you three, you know, one more thing before we go to our break, you, uh, who developed Marco, you sliding between the legs of Luke Shores. So that's something you came up with. I know it we just, talked about Jungle Boy being on the shoulders and. Oh, when he come out? When yeah, he comes yeah, out. It's, yeah. it's just kind of I didn't happened. know you did that. Yeah, I just did that. Back in the day, like with the, with the ramp, ramp yeah. before um, we had the, the plastic. I yeah. just did that one day and I went sliding. Yeah, so that's that one. You, you there's a gif of it where I just slide into the camera. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it backs up. Yeah, and that's like my favorite gif of myself. That was our first one. Uh huh. That, that was the first. Yeah. That was our first like real oh, wow. entrance. You yeah. just decided to do that. Right? Yeah, I just did it yeah. because your legs were spread. I was like, ooh, here's an opportunity. I'm tiny. <laughs> See, I like it when we don't think about those things and they just kind of happen. Those are always the best. Yeah, the organic stuff. That's kind of how the entrance did too, as well. Yeah, yeah. your Batista. <laughs> I mean that too. <laughs> You're listening to AEW Unrestricted, and we're talking with Jurassic Express. One thing I'd like to talk about is State Farm Insurance. And I say I'd like to talk about that because I've been a State Farm customer, a member, if you will, since 1981, since the year that I was married. State Farm has surprisingly great rates on both auto and homeowners. Tony, you've been a member of State Farm since before I was born. There you go. That means that they must have like great customer service. They've got yes, they agents do. available everywhere. Like to be a member of a company for that long, you have to be really, really happy with their policies. I'm happy with their policies. And now I'm happier, Aubrey, with their easy to use technology. Because back then, you'd have to have the insurance card in your wallet. It was a paper insurance card or like a cardboard insurance card. Now you have it on your phone. You have, they have a great app and you have your insurance card right on your smartphone. So the technology that is advanced in the world has also advanced insurance in insurance thanks to our people at State Farm. So you can manage your coverage, pay your bill, file a claim all just from your phone. Some That's you already right. carry around with you. Who That's needs right. cardboard cards anymore? Jeez. No boy. A, a great <laughs> price, 
with even greater service. So, Aubrey, as I always say, when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You say that all the time, Tony. I do. This is AEW Unrestricted with Tony Schiavone and Aubrey Edwards. We're here with a whole gaggle of gentlemen. Well, can you gaggle? Use, gaggle? That's that one way to put it's, it. It's, that's what you call a, a group of geese. Geese? Yeah. Huh. It's like a murder of crows and a gaggle of is geese. Is that because you think the, the dinosaurs have the bird background? No, that's I, not I just, true. Like, it's a myth. Dude, I just, I've only had two coffees today, and gaggle was the first word that came out of my mouth. That's fine. I so, liked it. Yeah. Good, thank you. I've bit. seen you thank fly. You. you can't lie to me. <laughs> 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 Lucha, Luchasaurus, yeah. you, you spent some time down at FCW. I did. Right? And yeah. uh, you had a chance to work with Dusty Rhodes down there? Yes, I did. How, was, uh, how did he kind of impact the current character? Well, I, I've talked about this before. He's one of my favorite. Um, well, he was actually one of my only supporters down there. So right. it was actually really cool. Um, but I was always trying to find a way to, you know, put my master's degree stuff in because I, for no reason, have a medieval master's degree. Because, like, how can I use this in a wrestling context? And, you know, in promo class with Dusty, you try different things all the time. And he always had me trying different ways to pinpoint how to do that. And we couldn't figure it out. But, a lot of the stuff I do now and the way I just talk is kind of just me being myself, which is what he liked. But I just put, I put a, you know, I don't want to call it a mask, but that's what it is. I guess yeah, it's, sure, it's unrestricted. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Well, as soon as I became a dinosaur and stopped trying to be a human, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, there you go, there you go. all of a sudden, like my, my sense of humor, it kind of became an absurdity kind of thing. And it, mm -hmm. it just made it work. So I was like, I wish I could, he could have been there to see that because I think he would have loved as soon as I put a mask on and figured out something that was totally because I never would have thought to do this on my own. It kind of just one of those things that we talked about organically happened. Um, so, but working with him and all that promo stuff, and it, it, it was cool to see like it come around a few years later and like, oh, now this all makes sense. Wow, everything he taught me kind of clicked. Right. So it was, if, without that, it would have been really hard for me to ever probably dive into a character like this. Right. Yeah. yeah. Lucha Source came from a uh, Lucha Underground crowd chance, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I was just in the ring and I thought... It was my first time back in like two years of even wrestling and I was very nervous and I didn't do much, but the crowd started chanting something. I didn't know what I thought they were making fun of me and saying, he, you just started. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, they think I'm a giant greenhorn. <laughs> Literally yeah. greenhorn. So I got to the back thinking, oh my God, I messed up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, people were like, no, <laughs> they were chanting Luchasaurus, man. I'm like, what the hell is a Luchasaurus? <laughs> you it's go for it. I was like, I thought I'm a giant snake. Nope. You know, no, I'm a dinosaur. So, you know, it took a while to understand exactly what that was supposed to mean. Damn. But that was it. That's how it started. Uh, tough wrestling with the, uh, if I can say, mask on. Is that tough for you? Oh, yeah. I mean. <laughs> you got like a limit on that thing, right? I, I mean, they're making a new one right now for me. You remember when you lost months. it almost? Yeah, it popped off almost that one time against yeah. Jake Hager. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I remember that. But that was my own fault. There's certain things I know I can't do with it. And that we've started to learn to bobby pin it to my hair, yeah. which is smart. actually very smart. You only just now, like like fucking 54 episodes into TV and you just now learned about bobby pins. Look, I'm not, I have a master's degree in history. It doesn't help me with man. anything practical. Okay. <laughs> I need help with this stuff. It's got to restrict your breathing. I mean, the, the way well, that that's moves. why he does all the moving. <laughs> I just come in there and he do. He just a comes quick... in and does like question mark kicks. Yeah, and that's shit. it. There's a couple of kicks, and I'm, I'm already dead after. Come that. Come in on the hot tag, kick a few guys. There you go. Well, here the thing Moon is, salt. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. But it, that kill, it's tough. I mean, in the heat in the summer, and I can't breathe out my nose in this thing at all. I can only, oh, you know. dude, I can't even imagine. I'm having a hard time just wearing pants. Yeah, I can't imagine not being it, able to breathe on my face in the ring. You're telling me it's yeah. tough. So Should I have to pace myself very smartly. My flies up. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I think our Marcos isn't down. Shit. This guy's. <laughs> Marco, what are you <laughs> laughing about? He's always laughing. Who knows? Mar Marco's the biggest guy in the Express. If you know what I mean. Hey, oh. Whoa. Okay. So well, before we go there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, I believe it. That's why I was laughing. Uh, <laughs> Jungle Boy, you started uh, really young. What What got you into wrestling? Um, I saw wrestling. Uh, I had some friends who showed it to me on TV. And I, I just thought it was awesome. It was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Um, and I had a trampoline, and I decided right then that I was going to become a wrestler. Uh -huh. So I went out with my younger sister and just tried everything that I saw. Um, Smart way to do it. Yeah. Uh, and it started with just, like, me wanting to clothesline her and stuff like that. And then mm -hmm. eventually I was, like, giving her tombstones and stuff like that. And it okay. got to the point where my parents were like, you can't be doing this. Um, and they found a place for me to go not too far from where I lived where they would teach kids how to wrestle. Right. <clears throat> how old were you? I was in the fourth grade. So. That's wild. Wow, that is Whoa, wild. Whoa, that's like, you were that's like 12. Insane. No, like nine? Yeah. Yeah, nine. I think, yeah, maybe I was nine. Like nine or 10? 10. 
Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so the, I remember my dad picked me up early from school one day and drove me over to it. Yeah. And this guy, looking back, it was like a kind of shitty ring, but he had this ring in his backyard, and I was like, wow, like that's that's a real ring. I was like, this is nuts. Um, and, yeah, I, just, I started going to these kids' classes for a little bit, and then I got good enough where uh, I was able to get bumped up to the adult class, which is where I met this guy for yeah. the first time. Yep. Um, yeah, and then I did that for like two or three years. I, I retired when I got into middle school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this guy. And Does his three years in the business, thinks he's hot shit. Yeah. Took a sabbatical. Like, I was like, I've been there, done that. Um, and I, I ended up not coming back until my last year of high school. And then that's when I've been going since then. And, and we met up again then too, though. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. In some warehouse randomly. Yeah. yeah. We're always in the same classes somehow. Universe is calling. Yeah. The jungle was calling. Manifested it, man. Yeah. Talk about how David Arquette uh, was instrumental in that. David Arquette. Yeah, David, I met, um, it was about a year and a half maybe before I got signed. Mm -hmm. I, I met David also right before my indie career really got going. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he and my dad were good friends. And he just got a ring in his backyard. Because right. he was, he just had that documentary that came out and he... Um, was training at his house and all that. And he just told me, he's like, anytime you want to come by and use the ring, uh, feel free. And the problem in LA is like to get to a ring takes like two hours with the traffic. It takes two hours to do anything in LA. It's horrible. Yeah. Um, so David's like 10, 15 minutes for me. So I was in that thing all the time. Um, here's a funny story real quick. I It makes me laugh because now I, I do a suicide dive almost every single match. And you do multiple? Multiples, yeah. I would... I, First, second, yeah, the top. Yeah, got to now. Um, David Sammy Arquette. did that the other day, and I'm like, dude, you're still in Jungle Boy's gimmick. I know, motherfucker. got to talk to him, yeah. Marco. That's, that's your friend. Yeah, but I Dave, have no say so. David Arquette <laughs> taught me how to do a suicide dive. Wow. Uh, really? Yeah, because I was really... <laughs> <laughs> like Marco's response. I, I was really scared to do it, because I always imagined my feet getting stuck and just like eating shit on the floor. Yeah. And I told him that. I was like, oh, I'm just scared to do it. And I remember he was wearing this like gold chain and like not wrestling clothes at all. And he's like, fuck it, dude, I'll do it. And he runs and just literally dives out onto the ground. There's like a little Like pad. nothing to catch him? There's like a little pad, which just dove onto it. And he gets up and his fucking nose is bleeding and he's ripped his chain because he did eat shit the first time. He's like, fuck it, I'm going to do it again. And he just did like four. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> and, like, and he was like, yeah, it's not that hard. And I was like, oh, fuck, dude. All right. So I was like, I got to try it. Um, and then I, I got it on the first time. It wasn't actually that hard. Oh. But I was like. No, you're a big pro. All well, right. No, I was like, okay, it's like, it's just a mental thing. But I was like, thank you, dude, because I don't think I would have done that without yeah. you. Whoa. Busting your fucking face up. That's yeah. cool. Well, good for David Arquette being out of his mind, uh, like we know he is, yeah. uh, oh, for helping you with that. Um, now, your dad never saw you wrestle in AEW, but he knew you signed with AEW, right? Yes. Yeah. I um, I got signed in... It was like February? I think it was actually January. I think they announced it in February, but it was in January. Okay. Um, yeah, I remember being... My sister was getting ready to go to Africa for six months because she was doing this whole program, like building schools and all that. And we were, we'd all gone to Michigan to see her before she left. Um, and I'd also done a GCW show in Chicago. So we were, we were all um, at breakfast one morning and I got a message on Twitter from Cody. Mm. And he just said, um, shoot me a text when you have a minute. And I, I had a feeling this might happen because I'd seen people following me on Instagram and stuff like Chris and the Bucks. And I was like, okay. But I. Something's I going down. Yeah, I knew, I knew something was happening. But I remember getting the text and I was sitting next to my dad and I just I showed him the phone like that under the table. And he just looked at me and was like, that's cool. And, um, you know, then it all ended up happening. Right. Um, and the, the last one he saw me have in person was my first uh, PWG, which that was cool for me, too, because that kind of PWG in itself was like a huge landmark thing. That's like you've made it on the indies when you do yeah. PWG. Um, so it was I'm really glad that he got to be there and see like things obviously going in that direction. Like it was my indie career and like that phase of it, like I'd completed it. So you got to be there for that. So that was cool. That's awesome. All right, Marco, you're from Mississippi. I am. Long tradition of wrestling in the Mid-South. 
How did you get into the sport? Uh, in the mid south. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Duh, Tony. No, uh, I had a group of buddies. Well, two buddies actually. Um, yeah. and the three of a gaggle of buddies. Gaggle of buddies. Uh-huh. Murder. And uh, we were the really the only ones that watched wrestling in high school, and we would hang out and do backyard wrestling and drop each other on our head and stuff. It was great. And uh, my dad told us about an event going on down the road, and we went to it, and it was a blast. And uh, we ended up asking the guys if they would train us, and they weren't really interested in me necessarily, but my buddy was six five or is six five and like three hundred and twenty pounds. So they were real interested in him. And uh, I took off with it a little quicker than they did. And uh, I started traveling a little little more. And uh, that's what helped me starting off really was getting out of the Mid-South. And uh, because nowadays in the Mid-South, it's not necessarily a, a key place. And like that's not It's got me. a lot of history, but it's it not really like bustling right now. It does. But like, and that's not me being negative against no. where I'm from. It's just right now is not the not the time to be there. You know, it's not sure. It, so, and that's like I've told people recently from there because they ask like like you know there's other people like Blake Christian mm-hmm. who's doing really well. Oh, from, he's from doing this great. Area. Him and Alex Zane are just and, like fucking nuts. Man. Yeah, they're very good right now. Like they'll ask me and him like, hey, what, what did you do to start doing these other shows? And you literally have to get out of where you're from. To yeah, do that. But get in the car and drive. Leave. That's how I got into it. And then um, I had a uh, performance with GCW where I came from the crowd and um, I wrestled KTB. Mm. It was actually he was here. Not yeah, so it was ago. him and Jungle he Boy in a match, right? Yeah. yeah, I ref that. I think. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Right. He was awesome. Yeah, he's, he's very great. vocal on the cell. He's he's great. He he uh, he helped me a lot. Got me over, and uh, that's actually the match that Cody and the Bucks noticed. And uh, Cody texted me that night and uh, invited me to All In, sure. uh, the Battle Royal. And uh, the Battle Royal was nuts because I wasn't supposed to get as much in as I as I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wardlow's texting Wardlow's Tony texting. now. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to get as much in. But actually, Bully Ray and Tommy Dreamer um, pushed for me to do a bunch of spots. Like, they pushed for me to eliminate Moose for the first elimination. Yeah. Oh, that stuff. doesn't make sense. It's all in, dude. It's wrestling. <laughs> You're a fucking dinosaur. Nothing makes sense. Doesn't have to. <laughs> You're 65 million years old. Yeah. yeah. All right. Master's degree and all. Yeah, you're right. Medieval history. You have a master's degree in shit that happened after you were born. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's why? not cheating. It's okay. Why okay, do it's you, not cheating. You lived why did it. you pick medieval history? Yeah. Um, Marco's just going to do my job now. I picked I'm medieval sorry. history it's because fine. I, had the question. I actually dropped out of college after the first semester because I hated it. And I was trying to just do business because I didn't know what to pick as a major. And I was like, oh, you're supposed to do business when you become an adult, right? I hated it. And then I had one history class I really liked. And the professor I would still talk to after I dropped down, he's like, dude, why don't you just be a history major? You like it. I'm like, I'm just going to go to school and do things I like. Right. Yeah. And because I did that, I started excelling all the classes, found one book from the, um, from the 12th century that I loved. And then a medieval professor that actually was at my university that was really good. I was like, I want to write a thesis on this and do a master's degree. She's like, that's a stupid idea, <laughs> but I'll, I'll definitely help you if you want to do it because I don't think you should – you know, be in this department for the rest of your life because it's, it's a trust me, it's a dead end. But if you really want to do this and you want to be crazy, let's do it. I was like, fuck it, we're it's your money, it. man. You want to yeah. light it on fire? So did it. And I wrote like this long thesis on it, and uh, you know, six years later, I got the degree, and now, Jeez. now I just use it as a thing for. Rest. <laughs> hey, it works, yeah, it works, man. You can, you can literally say you have a master's but degree. I, I do though. say Not it, many it's, people. It's legit. It got, you over, on BT. It got it me over. Yeah. It worked. It all. It all worked out because I just followed things I was passionate about. Exactly. Like you have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah, that's what I didn't want to start trying to plan for the future. I was like, I'm not going to complete anything if I do that. I'm going to well, be miserable. Well, it's funny to see like where like you can go on one path completely and then see kind of how that path influences yes. somewhere else. As long like, as you're open to it. Right. Like I was doing the video game thing for a long time, yeah. and then I went to refing, and now I'm doing video games while I ref things. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Right? And that, I think that's the thing is like in life, if you're just open, if you follow what you're passionate about, and you're open to then different possibilities along the way of that molding and changing you know, over time you're gonna be happy hopefully uh, before we go to the break i want to touch on one thing i think it was we were in philly yeah and it was supposed to be a tag match with you and jungle boy yeah, yeah. and i remember you getting hurt yeah 
And that was when Marco made his Dynamite debut. Yeah, yeah. You said, I think that was like the biggest moment of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. What did that feel like? Uh, like I think we ended up changing like, the whole card around, right? Like was, you guys were yeah. supposed to open, yeah, we were, and then you ended up like yeah. near the end because you had to replan everything. Oh, that so that, that happened like two hours before the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still didn't know 20 minutes before the show if you were going to wrestle. Yeah, they were trying, I think they were waiting until last minute, right? Uh -huh. They were trying to figure it out. They were like doing the work and stuff, but that was probably the most nerve-wracking match I've ever had still. Yeah. It was wild, dude. Because like just because it was so like we had to put it together – so quickly and like so on point because it's the Lucha Brothers and it's our TV debut. Or, right. Yep. Well, right. I remember that because I ended up pushing it forward. So the Lucha Brothers did the heel turn right at the beginning of the yeah. show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that they were heel when they fought you guys. Yeah. Which, Which helped. Made, a lot. Yeah, because they were supposed to turn heel. I think after they beat the match. The shit out of me. Right. It was perfect. It's like, oh, if they're gonna beat the shit out of Marco, they might as well be heel. I literally cool. thought my chest caved in at one point because of the chops yeah. when they. Well, that's, that's just Penta, ropes. right? Like, yeah. no, that well, was Phoenix. Dude. Oh, Phoenix, Phoenix is, is the one. Phoenix that got is me. just as bad, man. Thank, thank, thank you, you puppy. I love him. He's a motherfucker. He wears the best. Son of a bitch. It's like no one's gonna chop you with the best. Shakespeare and I tried. Shakespeare, 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 Shakespeare. Doesn't work. So, All right. Thank you. Get ready for some fan questions for Jurassic Express. This is AEW Unrestricted. Tony and Aubrey here with all of Jurassic Express. We've got a number of fan questions. Uh, you guys seem to be pretty over. I don't know if you knew that or a not. A gaggle of fan questions? A gaggle of fan questions. A murder of fan questions. Ooh. A murder? Yeah, like crows. Crows, did you say that? Yeah. Murder. Oh, yeah, you did the say that. The dazzle of zebras. Yeah. You're learning that's a lot that's of them. That's cool, Dad. Right? One of the hands is worth two in the bush. What's yeah. the saying? Wolf on the hill or something? What? Well, the wolf on the hill when they watch the food is there. Yeah. Jack and Jill. We're doing fan questions. Yeah. <laughs> the Brodzilla on Twitter for Luchasaurus. You're the reason my mom watches Dynamite. She's loved dinosaurs. Wait, and me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, she like my mom loves dinosaurs. She's a huge Big Brother fan. Uh, who in AEW would be a great Big Brother contestant? And who would be the first to be evicted? Oh God. Well, the people that are the best contestants. It's weird because you have to be very good socially and you have to be strategic at the same time. So it's not this the person that's vocal and is, is too loud because that person gets annoying. Right. So uh, I think uh, I think MJF would be out right away. And I'll tell you because. Oh, 100 yeah, percent. Because he's going to get too excited and he's going to go around and he's like, first, everyone's going to like him the first day. But by day five. It's like, okay, I think he's talking to everybody. By minute five. Maybe by minute five, yeah. I'll give him the benefit of a week. Right. But I think he might be first out, and he he would be the one that thinks he's going to win the whole thing. He's out first. I think Britt would end up winning. She Yes, yeah, she'd be great. She'd be I fucking she'd great. Be yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, Beast Wrestler 21 wants to know, for all three, since Ty Conte said no, Fuck. What other females okay. would you want in Jurassic Express? Well, it's not a it's not a concrete. I'm just though. reading this. Don't look yeah, at me. Yeah. Okay. This is how the fans are interpreting it, man. Yeah. Well, we'll see. There might be some BTS coming up. Oh, where things might change Why a little bit. Oh, 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 I like this. <laughs> yeah, I like this. We're not done yet. Okay. Um, with that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm still working on it, but I don't know, Jungle Boy. Do you have any other suggestions if we don't get to, if we don't get Ty into the who, who else Express. should you get, Jungle Boy? You want you want me to go to the next question? No, I want to. I think Jungle Boy has a suggestion. Well, no, I just it's 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 a it's an entertaining thing we got going on. All right, Jungle Pixie reasons. on Twitter for all three of you. Uh, when are you guys going after the tag titles? We need Golden Express. Wow. We got to. We want to pitch a trio. I keep. I keep. Title. I keep asking them to let me just run in and shoot on somebody, but they they keep <laughs> they keep telling me no. So, do you have a preference of who you'd run in and shoot on? I don't, I don't give oh, a. Oh boy! Give a damn. He just wants to shoot on everybody. I just want to go. Just go. E D E E D E. Marco stunt. Yeah. Um, titles soon. Soon. No, we're, Whenever. We're down. Where are Whenever. you guys ranked right now? Fifth. Oh, we're back in the ranking. Yes. Oh hey, hell congrats. Yeah. And after um, maybe next week, we got a big. We got a big dark. If we can Ooh. win that one, Ooh. Mm -hmm. we're going to go up again. I don't know go. when this is coming out. It's probably not for a couple of weeks. So no. you guys might be like oh, number one by out. then. We might be number one. You might by be then. number one by then. We may be out. Or we might, yeah. yeah. You never know. That's probably more likely. Mm. Okay. Uh, cinema. <laughs> Stop banging on the table. <laughs> you can literally pull the microphone out of the thing if you, you want. Fucking with the mic. Okay. Mark is comparing to something. Just go like this. <laughs> Marco, you can you can take it out of the out of that thing. Yeah, just slide it out like this. Slide it out and put it in your hand. Oh, you mean like that? Yeah. There you go. Take that thing away from him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. What she's doing. All right. I know how to handle it. Oh boy. Here we go. Cinema One on <laughs> Twitter for Marco's stunt. 
do you have any plans to really work on music? Because it's awesome and deserves to be out there. I appreciate that. No. No, Thank I'm just you very kidding. Much. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> Thank you for that answer. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've been writing a lot recently. So, like, I have a bunch, like, put away for yeah. whenever I get a chance to do that. And I, it's something I would like to do in the future. Yeah. But it's nothing that I'm, like, focusing 100% on right now. We haven't talked about your, your background in music, have Mm-mm. we? No. So tell us about no. it. I, uh, I grew up, well, actually, I didn't grow up singing, but uh, I grew up being musical, I guess. I would pick around on the piano and stuff, and I would pick out songs by ear as I'd hear them on the radio. I'd just pick out the notes and stuff. Right. So that was always fun for me. I still don't know how to actually play piano, but uh, I can play guitar now, which is my favorite. I started learning that in... Um, eighth grade uh-huh. actually and uh but i only start i i took a class in eighth grade um and i only took it for a few months but it's enough to get you like vip on jericho cruise yeah something like that oh, that week was <laughs> great they taught me like three or four chords which was really cool and that just That's all you need. That, yeah and that started me off on guitar we, we were not vip by the way we were down in the bottom i was in a VIP. we were this guy got a room balcony there. You got a balcony room? I had a balcony room. Yeah. Oh, we're sure. in the they were, cellars. Yeah. Mm. Marco was keeping him up at night because he had like eight video games going at once or yeah, something, right? TV, video TV games. Research, no, I just can't phone. sleep without sound. He would be watching things on the phone, the TV. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Oh, man. <laughs> hmm. Should have just knocked me out. Uh, Lee D. Line, that's L E E D E E Line on Twitter for Luchasaurus. I have a desperate need. I love this. Oh, I have a yeah. desperate need yeah. to hear anything about Luchasaurus's tattoos. Oh, well, what do you want to know? How many do you That's have? It. That's a question. I mean, there's like one big one. Also, yeah. is, he, is he a Chaucer guy? Oh, well, actually, that's a good. Well, I have about over 500 hours of tattoo work. I got most of it in college. I like I like that you measure it in hours more than number. That makes the most yeah. sense. I can't remember how many times I sat there for like different ones. Right. right? And I kind of start connecting one from my toes all the way up to my head. So. Yeah. Um, like all the way. So you're like, yeah, tat- like all the way. You're tattooed all <laughs> over goes, the place. It goes all the way. Yeah. So you're, wow. You're, you're Are you tattooed, tattooed everywhere? everywhere? Yeah. You're ta- really? Are you serious? On the actual deal? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, no. On the on. side of my leg, up the side. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. On the actual deal. Yeah. yeah on the actual deal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's Marco's territory. Not <laughs> no, me. No, no, I would never tattoo would, it. That's too. It much would take space. too long. I'm just. Hey! <laughs> That's another hundred hours uh, of work, everybody. I've got to use that. In com- I got to use it in commentary. Hit him on the actual deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, I my, is it unrestricted. Yes, it is. The professor I worked with studied Chaucer. I was actually be- a little before Chaucer. I studied Chrétien de Troyes, who wrote the Arthurian romances in the 12th century. Nice. Yeah. I like it. That's good yes. stuff. Man. All right, we got another question from Twitter. Uh, for all of you, what qualities do each of you bring to the team? Well, we know what Marco brings. The D. Dude, that's not a quality. Uh, <laughs> Maybe not for uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> I mean, something. he's matching all of them on Tinder for a reason, man. It's what, something. What qualities do we bring? Um, um, well, you're the you're the workhorse, definitely. Yeah, you, you, you take all the bumps. You're the go getter. He, he brings the 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 heart. He's the heartthrob. You know? He's the he's the one the ladies like. Yeah, he's the yeah. ladies' man. Well, I'll say this. I'm going to put Marco Stun over for a minute. Marco is my favorite person to watch wrestle. Yeah, um, I know. Me too. Oh, 100%. They, they probably don't have the camera on us, but we stand there on the apron, me and Luchasaurus, just fucking smiling and laughing so hard because <laughs> my favorite thing is when Marco gets hit a little bit hard, you can see his face just change. I, I just have my guys done. Sometimes he just gets up and he just starts going. He just kicks the guys in the face, <laughs> fucking going buck wild. Um, but also... Then for me, Mark, like, p- people don't ever see it because when the hot tag happens, it's all on him. Every single time I make the hot tag and roll out, I'm blown up out of my mind. Yeah, I'm you like, are. Oh, my God. I roll on the ground, and Marco's right there immediately with a bottle of water. Oh. Pouring it in my mouth, and he's like, you got it, dude. You're doing great. So he really, literally is, is helping me so much. He's the glue that holds you guys together. Yeah, yeah. for real. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, oh. Stop. You're going to make me cry. So Marco's the the dick and the backbone of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. BBB? In, in many ways. Big, okay, a little lady backbone? Katie on Twitter oh has two questions for Jungle Boy. Here we go. Finally. At some point in the future, Jungle Boy, do you think you'll start playing around with your hair, putting it in different styles when you wrestle like a braid? 
Are you going to uh, keep the Griff Garrison going on? Oh, my oh, God. God. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, that was terrible. Yeah, oh, yeah, that, that was low. That was brutal. That was um, brutal. Yeah, I'm sure at some point I'll uh, do some things here and there. Um, I don't know about a single braid. I don't know if I Maybe for a pape once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I got to switch it up. Um, I think maybe I'll go through phases. Like, I'll have a little hairstyle I do for a while. Um, I don't know. I'm still trying to have the classic look right now. When You said you are going to shave it in, like, a couple years or something? I think when I'm a dad, I'm going to cut it. Yeah. When you're oh. a dad? I'm going to get this cool mohawk. So you can be a cool dad? Yeah. Because oh. you're not a cool dad without a mohawk. Yeah, so I don't know. We'll yeah. see. That's a, that's a ways away. Yeah. Yeah, 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 dude, don't change. Don't change. <laughs> okay. This is kind of your moneymaker, right? Don't now. change. Yeah. You, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I want to add something to this, okay? I want to add, and this is not a fan question, but I want to add something to it. Uh, Jungle Boy, I want to talk about your match uh, that you had with Jericho. Yes. Oh, uh, that was good. Tremendous moment for you, wasn't it? I mean, in many ways. Th- that, um, I think still that is my favorite moment. Um that was like my first big moment here. Right. Um, it just, it's crazy. I, it, like it changed everything really for me. Um, I feel like also the second I touched Chris, I became a better wrestler. He's great like that, it's, right? It sounds dramatic, but like literally by the end of that match, my whole perspective and everything on wrestling was different. Um, I think we were talking about it beforehand. It was like, all of this shit's real simple, yeah. but it's really great storytelling and just hit him really hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went in, I, I was so nervous. I've never been more nervous um, about anything. I was throwing up, all this crazy yep. shit. Yeah, you were. Um, a lot of that. You were. Yeah. For me, though, it ended up just being like, that night was perfect for me. My um, my family came out to Texas to watch it. Um, and then the match went great. I it, it was perfect for me. And then, I think that was the week before Christmas. And I just remember at the after party being with my family and all my friends. And the match oh, had yeah. Gone well. And I was just like, I feel really good about everything right now. And um, since then, everything's just been, it's been awesome. It's gravy. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, little Lady Katie wants to know from Lucha Source, have any of your big brother classmates reached out to you since Dynamite starting airing? Um, well, I don't keep in touch with many of them, actually. There's a couple I do. Um my friend Meg and my friend Jason. Um, and it's funny because when I was on the show. Is that like, the real names? Yeah, that's the real name. Okay. Yeah. My fr- Judas. It, yeah. Well, well I, I would say that. But um, they, they, they you call me Austin there too. But uh, the uh, my friend Meg, we were kind of friends on the show. My, Jason, we were enemies on the show. And it's funny. Like afterwards we find out, oh, actually, you know, we're pretty, he's a normal person. And I really like him. Most of the people, uh, I feel like. They just get stuck in that world, and it's like it's hard to talk to them. I don't know. They only want to talk about – anytime I've talked to a lot of those people, they just want to talk about the show or the next season of the show, and I wanted to get away from it. Right. right. And it, it was not a good necessarily – it was a good learning experience in my life, but it wasn't a necessarily a good experience because you get out of that thing, and there's this feeling of fame that's not real, and then you have nothing to do, and it's a depressing thing. And a lot of people go back to their normal job, and they, they were in front of cameras for three months, and it's, it's a lot to take in. So um, people that have been able to get away from it, I think, you know, the one or two people that get to do a bunch of other shows, that's great. But everyone else is kind of like, what's next? Yeah. So I, I wanted to separate myself from it, just from my own mental well-being. So there was a little allusion to this yeah. earlier, but the, the voice of Doug W. on Twitter, for all three of you. What are you doing? Wardlow. Is that Wardlow texting? Yeah, it's Wardlow. Wardlow yeah. special yeah. Okay. Tone. All right. Oh, well, it's definitely Wardlow. Yeah. It's almost up. Is it a bunch of ladies? Yeah. <laughs> Voice of Doug ladies. W on Twitter. Does Marco's friendship with Sammy present a conflict of interest? Um, in the in the background. Wait, with re- your group. Oh, with your group. I don't know. I mean, it, I don't it, know. Does it? Yeah, we have to ask, yeah. ask Marco about that. I don't think that's a me question. I mean, it's for all three of I you. I don't feel so. like I don't feel like it 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 prevent or pre- blah, 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 blah. I don't feel like there's conflict with it. You know, I feel like you know. You can all be professionals. Yeah. yeah. We're all civil when it comes to... Just Sammy, he's an idiot. Like well, Sammy Sammy can be... Head, we'll like, <laughs> I, I told him he needs to learn to close his chairs. Yes. Does he not? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, does he? Oh, no. I think we all remember that. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, this is a great question. Uh, and it's kind of serious, but I like it because uh, I think I know the answer to this. Oh, shit. Uh, did the AEW locker... This for all three. The AEW locker room accept Marco right away? Or did many people think because of his size... That he didn't belong. I, 
I mean, yeah. I guess you'd know better than me. I don't remember anyone ever in AEW having a problem with it. Yeah, no, everybody. A- AEW was not really ever a problem. No, no. They, they, everybody's AEW, accepted this. Yeah, yeah. It's helpful that a lot of us all knew each other from the Indies. Yeah, that, yeah. that did that, help. Uh, as this well. locker room wasn't like a foreign locker room. No. We were all no. kinda, we all knew each other. Right. Yeah. There was like maybe like a couple people in like the women's locker room I hadn't worked yeah. with, but I knew everybody. Most everyone was already friends, which was cool. Yeah. Right. It was like I knew everybody. It's I'm, like, oh cool, we all get to work together now, but now there's money involved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well that's that yeah. that was the good thing. Everyone's just excited yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really feel any hostility. Yeah. So, so everyone is accepted and uh I think all three of you would agree, and I know Aubrey would agree, it's been uh, it's been quite a ride in a short period of time hasn't it absolutely yeah it's been yeah. nuts absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. thanks guys thank you thank you oh, that's this is super fun told you it was gonna go fast that's yeah. it. i was fast flew it flew by right wow. damn i didn't yeah. mean to copy you our thanks to luchasaurus marco stunt and jungle boy truly three of our favorites yes 100 yes. percent. are my faves you know that yeah hey know, right? hey hey, hey before up? we go off i just want you guys to know that me and tony share personal information together yes and and a common and, thread uh, yeah shivani like what? Yeah, we'll leave. Yeah. You yeah, sharing girls sure. on Tinder? No. Well, not, <laughs> what? Well, that's wow. that's not for podcast. <laughs> that's right. Um, <laughs> we'll cut that. Wardlow's calling, guys. Wait, I got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our thanks to Jurassic Express. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Oh, yeah. We're not done yet. Be sure to subscribe to the AEW Unrestricted Podcast for free, and you can hear crazy shit like this wherever you get your podcast. <laughs> BDE. <laughs> you can also check out the video of the podcast on YouTube. Just search AEW Unrestricted. And of course, make sure you watch AEW Dynamite every Wednesday, 8 o'clock, 7 central on TNT. I'm Tony Schiavone. I'm Aubrey Edwards. Thanks for watching and listening to AEW Unrestricted. Bye-bye.